Today I'm going to run through the process of designing a business card and talk about some of the important things to consider when designing for print. It's super important that you get things like bleed, colour mode and resolution right when you're creating your artwork, otherwise you might end up having your files rejected by the printer, having to start again from scratch or even worse, receiving hundreds of prints back that look nothing like your design. So hopefully this guide will cover each step and ensure your print projects go smoothly. Business cards are a common printed project that are fairly simple to design, but before you start make sure you receive specific artwork instructions from the printer you're going to use. Every company has their own preferences, so the settings I'm using in this tutorial might not match up exactly to what your printer wants, but at least you'll know what they're referring to when they say things like trim size and bleed size. We're going to use a mix of Illustrator and Photoshop to make the most of each application's strengths. The overall design will be composited in Illustrator, so we'll start there. Create a new document and enter the dimensions of the business card in the artboard size settings. A common business card size is 88 by 55 millimeters, but again make sure you check with your printer first on the exact product specs. If you're in the US, you'll probably find that the measurements are in inches as opposed to millimeters. The print firms I've used in the past required 3 millimeters of bleed, so enter 3 millimeters in one of the bleed fields and press tab to apply it to all sides. Bleed is basically some padding around the edge of the design which is cut off during the printing process. It ensures that you don't end up with tiny slithers of white paper along the edge of your prints if the machine isn't lined up exactly. We're designing for print so select the CMYK colour mode so we're working in cyan, magenta, yellow and black inks as opposed to RGB light. Then most business cards are double sided so increase the number of artboards to 2. The main white area of the artboard is the finished business card size, also known as the trim size. The red outline indicates the bleed area which any backgrounds will need to extend to. It's also wise to highlight a safe zone within your document. This not only makes sure your important elements like a name or logo aren't too close to the trim area that they risk being chopped off, it also helps balance your design by applying some margin around the edge. The size of the safe zone is entirely up to you, but 5 to 10 millimeters shifts your elements inwards enough to look neat. You can highlight this area by using guides, or draw a rectangle, then right click and select make guides. I want a black background for my card design, so I'll grab the rectangle tool and draw a shape that covers the entire bleed area, clearing out the stroke to leave just the fill color. A black background sounds simple enough, but there's a whole plethora of different blacks in print design. If you move the colour picker to black, you'll notice it's made up of 000 in RGB, which means there's no light, so it's as dark as you can get, but look over at the CMYK values and they're all over the place, totalling at 329%. This is way too much ink to be printed when you consider the general limit is around 260%. There's a basic 100% K black, which uses just the black ink from the standard CMYK process colours. This is good for text because just using one ink out of the four CMYK colours means you'll get the sharpest possible print, but when it's applied to a large area, it can look a bit washed out. Rich black is the term used for mixes of cyan, magenta, yellow and black that result in a deeper black. A common one is 50, 40, 40, 100, which refers to the percentages of the four CMYK colours you set in your software and the amount of ink printed with each plate. The trouble is, this particular colour mix uses all four plates, so it has a high risk of misregistration which can cause fuzzy text, which you often see on cheap newspaper prints. A couple more common blacks are warm black and cool black, which makes 100% K with 50% cyan or magenta. These two recipes only use two plates, so it's much safer to use with small text while still darkening the black. The difference between them, as their names suggest, is one of them has more of a cooler blue tone, whereas the other has a warmer browny red tone. I'm going to be using blue elsewhere in my design, so I'll go with the cool black to complement it. Set up the colour manually by entering the relevant percentages in the CMYK values. You can now begin building your business card design by bringing in a logo, scale it to size and align it to the safe zone guides. There's no white ink in printing unless it's a super specialist print. Giving something a white fill in your software will translate to the other elements being knocked out to allow the paper to show through. When entering the text for your print design, 6 points is usually the lowest you'll want to go. The business card is held up close so you can get away with generally smaller type, but be careful if you're using elegant fonts with high contrast, there's a point where fine lines become unprintable. The Slab Serif Achille font that I'm using is pretty robust, so it can handle 6 point even in its regular weight. 
One thing to keep in mind when designing for print is the paper stock forms a large part of the final design which you don't get to see on screen. A lot of people try and add gradients and drop shadows to make their designs more interesting, but these often just muddy the final print. An area of flat colour might look boring on screen, but when it's printed you'll see the texture of the paper with a matte or glossy finish. In my design I'm enclosing the main name and contact info in a white box, which needs extending up to the bleed area. The text within this area needs to be black. I could use the cool black with 50% cyan, but there's not really any point since the text isn't a large enough area to see the difference. All it does is risk misregistration, so instead normal 100% K is the better option. For the other side of my business card design I'm going to leave the background white but make use of a photo, so here's where Photoshop comes into play to use its strengths as an image editor. We need to recreate the business card document size in PSD format, so I create a new document and change the dimensions to millimetres. Photoshop doesn't have a separate bleed setting so we need to calculate the total dimensions. 88mm plus 3mm on each side equals 94mm, and likewise 55 plus 3 plus 3 equals 61mm. All print work needs to be 300 ppi so I change the resolution to 300 pixels per inch, then set the colour mode to CMYK. We can't see where the actual trim line is, but setting the safe zone up with guides will make sure the elements are laid out nicely. A quick way to do this is to set the size of a marquee, then snap guides to it. I want to have a logo and a tagline on this side of the card, so I'll paste in the logo graphic from Illustrator and type out the text with the relevant font. Usually it's advised to add all your text in Illustrator because it's made in crisp vectors rather than fuzzy pixels, but I'm going to overlay a photo in my design so Photoshop is the best option in this scenario. I've downloaded this space scene from Shutterstock. Pasting it into the document will automatically convert it to CMYK and reformat it to 300 ppi. This is a nice high resolution stock photo so I've actually got to scale it down a lot. You don't want to try and use small images from the web because they'll only be the size of a postage stamp in print terms, unless you upscale them which will just make them look totally ugly. The effect I'm going for can be created using a layer mask. Filling it with black hides the entire photo, then the areas I want visible can be selected and filled with white. Use Photoshop anytime you're working with textures and images as part of your print designs, then add text and logos in vector format over the top in Illustrator. When you're done, save the file as a JPEG using the normal save as command so it retains the resolution and the colour mode. Back in Illustrator, this background can be placed onto the artboard for the other side of the business card. Before exporting the final print file it's wise to outline your fonts by pressing Command and A to select all, then Command Shift and O to create outlines. This eliminates any chance of your font not being picked up when it's opened on the printer's computer and defaulting to something boring. Go to File, Save As and select PDF. There's some options to add printer's marks but unless your printer has specifically asked for them just leave them off. There's also a PDF setting here that might be required but again it depends if your printer has asked for it. This file now contains both business card sides in one print ready document. You can give the file a quick check over by opening it up in Adobe Acrobat. Look for the output preview tool and toggle the various plates to see how the design will be printed using the four process colours. In my design you can see magenta and yellow aren't even used at all on the first side. On the other side the photo is made up of various percentages of all four colours. If you're new to print design this video might have bombarded you with loads of information but hopefully it was a comprehensive guide to the things you need to consider when setting up a print file. If you did find the video useful a thumbs up to help spread the word would be really appreciated and if you want to stick around for more remember you can hit that subscribe button. So as always thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.